time for our big talking point. Today, what do we think of blue cards? Now, it's one of those questions where I think I'll ask it again and then hand it over to you two. <laughs> Let's start with you, Glenn. What do you think of blue cards? Blue cards. Well, I feel as though we've got two cards already, a yellow and a red, and I think it's enough for the officials because we keep getting decisions wrong. Uh, I heard what Postacoglu had to say about blue cards, and I do tend to agree that if we are to simb in place for 10 minutes, it's going to slow the game down. Players are going to try and waste time until they get that player back on, and we want pace, we want entertainment... I am against blue cards. Blue I, cards? I agree wholeheartedly with, with Glenn and uh, Postacoglu because I think at the end of the day, referees have enough things to manage in a game at the moment and we're not able to get all the correct decisions as it stands. You know, you, you've got two cards, you've got VAR, um, you've got all the other things that are happening within a football match. I don't think you need to add any more things that are going to slow down uh, the pace of the game and, and actually cause and um, pose more tactical challenges for managers. But allow me to be devil's advocate for one moment, which I've done many times in my BBC radio and television <laughs> career. And say, for example, it's worked very well in Rugby Union, of course. You know, yellow card, sin bin. You sit in there for 10 minutes, cool off. So has the video referee, though. Yeah, very true. The TMO, and the TMO is <laughs> TMO, fantastic yeah. in Rugby yeah, Union. Brilliant. And there's a debate about whether the TMO is better than the way football's employing technology. So... If somebody, for example, is shouting at the referee and it doesn't deserve a yellow card or a red card, a blue card is a good idea, is it not? <laughs> a blue card's <laughs> a bigger punishment than a yellow card. Yeah. So I'd rather just get but a yellow a... card for shooting at the, shouting at the referee. But maybe if you're using abusive language, shall we say, or are you saying that should be a red card? No, I'm saying the game should stay the same. Uh, yeah, I mean, I am it's all... To improve yeah, player behaviour, And it? I'm all for improving player behaviour, but we still want an entertaining sport, and I just feel this is going to slow it down, and that isn't what we want. The Premier League's the best league in the world for a reason, and it's because of its speed uh, and the prowess of it and the players we get to it. If we start slowing it down, it's going to become more nfl -y, more like an American sport. And how okay. many players can you give a blue card to? Good question. For one incident. Yeah. Because say there's one incident and three or four players are complaining. Are they all gonna, yeah. <laughs> gonna send five side. players off yeah. <laughs> for ten minutes? Okay, <laughs> referee complainers. We've done a little bit of research here. The players who can't help but complain to the referee this season, if blue cards were employed, I think you've got these stats as well. It would be the likes of Andres Pereira, Bruno Fernandes, and Nicholas Jackson. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have made that list back in the day, actually, Jason. <laughs> and looking back in Premier League history, players like Wayne Rooney and Sebastian Larsson would have also probably received their fair share of blue cards. Wider question. One of the ones that perhaps I've not heard too much in the discussions over this over the past couple of days, on the radio especially. Are you fed up of people interfering in the game? Do you know what? I just think the game's gone through such a huge transition with VAR to add something again so soon when I don't think we've quite got to grips with VAR as good as it could be. It could be much cleaner. I don't know why you would add something else into the mix. Because that's been one of the frustrations on social media. People just saying, look, just leave the game alone. I mean, look, I watch a lot of EFL football. My football team are in the Championship. So when I watch a game... It's a bit like, it's unlike a Premier League game because if you get the decision, you get the decision. It's like, it's like the football I grew up with. And many yeah. people who I sit next to say, this is the football that I want. Well, it's not the game anymore, is it? If it keeps changing and adapting, it's essentially a new game and a new sport to some degree. Yeah. So we have two tiers and, and, of football, and, don't we? Because and, yeah. if I go to a Premier League game on a Saturday and then go to a Championship game on a Sunday, you're looking entirely different. Look at the FA Cup, for example. You've only got VAR at the grounds that have got... VAR technology. And when you mention the EFL, I think they're at a financial disadvantage. We can see that because the Premier League's a global spot, uh, a global brand now, isn't it? But also that, that step up in VAR when you're not used to, to it and you can use the dark art in football, all of a sudden you can't against better opposition. That step up's even harder. OK. Have we reached a conclusion? Blue cards? <laughs> think, yes or no? I think we have. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're... <laughs>